Hi guys, uh, in today's video I'm going to go through decanting rattle can paint from uh, auto rattle cans such as this. In this case it's a, a can of primer, this is probably about three quarters full, it's had a little bit used. Um, but the same applies regardless of how full or empty. The can needs to have sat for a good 12 hours or so to make sure that everything's settled. You do not want to shake this up before doing it. Now there are methods online that show you using a straw and fitting it into the nozzle to decant it into a jar or something similar. Um, I'm not a fan of those methods because it's very very messy and it wastes paint in additionally. You will need some masking tape handy. So I'm just going to stick a couple of pieces of that to my tripod. It enables you to get pretty much the majority of the paint out of the can. Ideally you want to make sure you're wearing uh, gloves eye protection and do this outdoors. I'm doing this indoors purely because the weather is really really bad but provided you do it properly it should be quite safe. Now what we're going to do is going to take a sharp pointed instrument and going to pierce this can at the very very top without shaking it or disturbing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You'll notice as well I've got this in a cardboard box so again if you do this outside make sure you've got somewhere to point it that will keep it relatively safe and you want to make just a tiny hole. You could use a drill bit chucked in a vise and you'll hear it start to hiss just like now. Point this up here. Hopefully you can hear that. You can certainly smell the propellant and the um, the thinners that's used in the paint. You can see if I turn that round. Obviously you can hear that, but you can see there's nothing coming out of there. Now this is why it's important that you absolutely do not shake the can before you do this. Because uh, everything's going to be much more agitated and under pressure. So. What this will do is degas the contents of the can. Now you can leave this pointing towards some cardboard. Ideally you need to do this in a box outdoors. I wouldn't recommend you do it indoors. The sole reason this is happening indoors is because the weather outside is absolutely awful. And then um, we're going to come back in just a moment. I'll explain the purpose for the masking tape and the next steps. Well this can is almost done gassing out. Something I forgot to mention is you'll need a jar or possibly two depending on the size of the can. Ideally something bigger than these. This just, I just happen to have a couple of these. Um, but uh, a glass jar is good and, uh, and so even something like a jam jar or a smaller version of um, as long as you can make an airtight seal with the lid. That's the, only, that's the main thing, that's the important thing there. So. Just to make sure that that's completely gassed out, I'm going to poke my scribing tool or pointy tool or whatever it is you happen to use. Give it a, a good dig in there, enlarge the hole and just make absolutely certain that there's nothing else in there. And then at this point you take your masking tape like so and stick it over the hole. Make sure you've got a good seal. It doesn't have to be masking tape. You can use gaffer tape or, you know, electrician's tape or pretty much anything. So stick it over the hole, finger over it, and at this point, give it a really good shake. And the can will be very, very cold from degassing. You can see the frost on there. So Give it a good warm up in your hands as well. You don't want it too warm of course, but you don't want it freezing. Give it a really good shake, make sure you agitate it with the ball bearings. And what you're doing at this point is actually mixing up the paint and thinners um, because the propellant's now leached out. So it's safe to, uh, to handle, but of course you need to cover this hole. It will leak out a bit more, you can hear that. And you can see it bulging just there. But this is what happens when you agitate it because there'll be, there'll be bits of propellant gas that were caught up in the paint and you'll see it actually leaks a bit of paint there as well. As you can see we've got um, a little bit of spray out there so that was me being a bit vigorous with the shaking. Um, don't be quite so hasty with the shaking but again good reason to do this outdoors. The next step we need to start enlarging the hole 
to enable you to start making a cut so that we can actually pour the paint. Now the metal is actually very thin so you can use your, uh, your poking device to start off an enlarger hole and then take something like these which is a pair of secateurs um, obviously for gardening but all it needs is something tin snips is good if you have some uh, unfortunately I don't but um, or even a pair of those scissors now you see this is cutting through quite effortlessly uh, you need to do need to be careful that you don't spill of course and the fuller the tin is the more likelihood there is a spilling be careful also that you don't cut yourself you will get very sharp edges so um, a pair of those sort of tough kitchen shears that you see advertised a lot of people have those in the kitchen drawer a pair of those is perfect you can pick them up very cheaply from um, from your cheap sort of power stores and, uh, and DIY places or gardening scissors you know anything anything that will cut through the thin metal of a can um, the metal on a rattle can uh, as you can see there hopefully is only really slightly thicker and stronger than, um, than a drinks can a kind of pop coca-cola or what have you um, so cut all the way around until you get to the end there you go and you can see what you've got in there is your nice thin runny paint mixture at the bottom and your hose which sprays the paint up the propellant obviously being in the top which is what you've released forces the paint down when it's shaken and you depress this because it's under pressure forces it up there and out of the nozzle this bit you can take out and discard we don't need this any longer I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe and wrap the end in paper towel so it doesn't make too much of a mess and then what you're left with is uh, some hopefully well shaken paint in the bottom of the can what you need to do now is take your paint receptacles um, I'm definitely going to need to find something else if you try and squeeze at one side you can make yourself a nice little pouring spout like so and then you need to decant your paint into the pots as you see there and pop the lids on now at this point you do not screw the lids on tight that's very very runny it will be um, suitable for spraying straight away uh, if you do leave it open and it becomes thick then you can thin it with cellulose thinners what you need to do is pop the lid on but not actually screw it on just going to pop that over to the side there while I do the other one and you need to leave that with the lid sitting on top for a good few hours somewhere cool and dark where it's not exposed to sunlight UV rays and it's not exposed to heat which will help it uh, go off so you need to leave that somewhere cool and dark to allow it to degas the last little bits that are in the pot. So I'm going to pop that over to one side. Um, obviously there's still quite a bit in there for me to decant so I'm going to need to find something like an old jam jar. Um, if you're so inclined you can dig the ball bearings out of the bottom and save those to throw in your paint pots for mixing. It's always handy. And that's really all there is to it. That's, that's how to sort of safely um, decant aerosols for spraying in an airbrush because obviously from there you just pour it straight into your airbrush and spray you thin it if you have to but uh, it shouldn't require it because aerosol paint is very thin by its very nature and that's really all there is to it uh, once you've poured it out you leave the lids for the paint to degas leave it for a good few hours and then screw the lids on nice and tight check them for every few hours after that just to make sure that they're not building up pressure because the last thing you want is to unscrew a lid and have it to paint everywhere not very nice one final little additional thing um, essentially what I've ended up doing is decanting the remainder because there's much more in this can than I thought I thought it was about uh, about a quarter use maybe a bit more 
there's actually much more in there than I thought. So um, for a normal size sort of can from a, an auto shop, bear in mind you'll need a decent sized jam jar to decant into. Uh, this is a Marmite jar, a sort of medium sized one which I use for sitting my car bodies on when I'm spraying them. And you can see that's, that's got the remainder of the paint in there as well as those two little Tamiar pots that I had um, that I was optimistically thinking I would decant the majority of the paint into. So there you go. Uh, again, as I say, I hope this video has been useful to any of you who have thought about decanting paints from aerosols for airbrush spraying. Bear in mind you will need to clean up afterwards with cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners as our American cousins call it. Uh, as I say, it should be very, very thin and watery looking. You should be able to decant it straight into your airbrush and spray. You are able to do that immediately, by the way, after decanting if you want. One more final, final note, um, you will get a few little dregs in the bottom of the tin and you can get out as much as you like, you can pour a bit of cellulose thinners in there, give it a swirl out, pour it out, get as much as you like out, but do dispose of these uh, responsibly, not being pressurised anymore, not being aerosols, you can just throw them in your waste, but uh, be responsible, make sure it's relatively clean before you do that and it's not going to burst and get paint all over your uh, nice friendly garbage disposal guys. Okay, so again thank you very much for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.